Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to create the axle peg on Autodesk Inventor. This is for Introduction to Engineering Design, which is part of the Project Lead the Way curriculum. Before we begin, a very important note or two. Make sure that whenever you create these, uh, these models, when you're in sketch mode, everything needs to be fully constrained before you do anything like finishing the sketch and going and doing an extrusion or revolve or whatever it is. If you don't, fully constrain your sketches. That's going to lead to huge issues later on with things that you just simply can't do and you're not really sure why. Another thing that we've learned is that you need to keep your sketches simple. The, the way you do this is by filleting, chamfering, everything else like that. Instead of doing it within the actual sketch, when possible, do these things in 3D mode. It's going to keep your sketches simple and it's going to make it easier to fully constrain sketches, which leads back to those first couple of bullet points. The last thing that I want to point out is there are many ways of creating these 3D models like the axle peg that I'm going to show you. So what you're going to see in this video is only one way to do it. Really, the goal is that you become independent and you're able to do these without our help as time goes by. So if you have a different way of creating the same piece, then by all means, go for it. Okay, so to begin with the axle peg, the first thing that we're going to do is draw the shaft. In order to do that, I thought the easiest way would just be to create a circle and extrude that to the length of the shaft. So that would be the part without the head. After we go through this process, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch on the top surface right here of the cylinder. Whenever I do that, I'm going to project the geometry of the, dra of the shaft. That gives me this green circle right here, which means I can use it, and which means it locks in my center point right here. And then I can sketch a circle from that center point outward to the correct dimensions, and I can extrude it. After I do this, then I need to create a work plane. I'm going to create an offset work plane, which allows me to have one floating out here in the middle of nowhere, like you can see. The dimensions for that, you're going to need to pull out the dimension sheet and understand that eventually this is going to be the top of the peg, that flat surface where the hex piece lies. After I do this, I'm going to add one more work plane in, and this is really the more important one for now. The idea is that I need to go over to the origin folder, which is in the browser on the left hand side. You're going to see a folder that says origin, and you're going to click on the little plus or minus sign to expand it to show all of my original planes and axes that were available whenever I first started drawing the part. Hover over these things until you find one of them that gives you a work plane that cuts right through the middle of the axle like this. Okay. When you do that, you can right click on the plane right here, right click on it and choose visibility and that'll make that available for you to use. Oh, whoops. When you do that, then we can create a new sketch on that work plane, and the new sketch is gonna look something like this, okay? I'm gonna, again, project geometry, okay? Project geometry of this piece, and I'm also gonna project the geometry of this horizontal work plane that I created. That's the one that was floating off in the middle of nowhere just a second ago. And the idea is that I need to draw the full profile of this outline right here, including the top and bottom line. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes up from here, up to the work plane, it goes over, another line that comes over here and connects to the endpoint, and then an arc that transfers between the two. Okay, You need to fully constrain everything, make sure everything is locked into place with the correct dimensions. After you do that, then it's a simple matter of finishing the sketch and clicking revolve. You have a piece that looks like this so far, so we're getting pretty darn close to being done. After you revolve, then we're going to do a sketch on the top surface. We're going to use the polygon tool to draw a hexagon. The hexagon needs to be dimensioned to be 5 30 seconds across the flats. You can see that I've dimensioned it across the flats here. You just simply need to type in the number. After you put that in, you need to extrude cut after you finish your sketch, and you'll have the top of the axle peg completed. So the last step is to get the threading on there. So we're going to go through, and if you click on threading at the top, you'll be able to click on this cylinder right here, and it'll pop up with a menu. There's two tabs to it, so I've shown you both tabs at the same time. The first thing it'll want to do is it'll default to full length. You don't want the full length threaded. You'll notice that it stops about right here. Okay? You're going to have to go get the dimensions for this off of your dimension sheet, but you need to type in the proper values for offset and length to get it to look like this. If you click over on the specification tab up here, it's going to bring up something that looks like the bottom menu. Um, but typically, that's the default setting anyway, and so you probably won't even mess with it. Once you're done with that, click OK. Head down to the bottom of the shaft throw in a chamfer, and make the two work planes that were there, those orangish work planes, right click on those and make them invisible. And whenever you finish that, then you're done with the axle peg. Congratulations. 